Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to begin our commencement ceremony by recognizing the alumni of our university who joined us today. Would all Sacramento State alumni please stand and remain standing. Will the remainder of the audience please stand for the singing of our alma mater, All Hail, and our national anthem performed today by Sacramento State recent graduate Taylor Haynes and accompanied by the Sacramento State Fine Arts Brass Ensemble. <clears throat> Welcome to the podium, Jill Trainer, Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Good morning, and welcome to the winter 2015 commencement for the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. This is an important day for graduates, families, and friends. I ask that while celebrating, everyone observe the appropriate decorum and show respect for fellow graduates and members of the audience. Please turn off your cell phones and remain in your seats until all students have been recognized. Let us make this a special day for everyone. Graduates, your day is here. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics at Sacramento State, I want to say that we are very proud of you. You have studied hard and spent countless hours in lectures, in laboratories, and in the laboratory to get here today. 
Many of you have learned what it's like to conduct scientific research, to teach others, and to perform community service. Graduation is a milestone, and today is the time to celebrate how far you've come and to imagine how far you can go. At the heart of the university is the faculty. We are fortunate to have a group of faculty who are dedicated to their students and committed to their teaching. I ask that the college faculty please stand to be recognized. Thank you. I now have the privilege of introducing the individuals seated on the platform. President of California State University, Sacramento, Robert S. Nelson. <laughs> Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Frederica Freca Harmson. <laughs> Vice President for Administration and Business Affairs, CFO, Mike Lee. <laughs> Vice President for Student Affairs, Ed Mills. <laughs> Vice President and Chief Information Officer, Larry Gilbert. <laughs> Vice President for Public Affairs and Advocacy, Phil Garcia. Chief Marshal Sylvester Bowie, Associate Dean Jane Bruner, Alumni Association Representative Marco Rodriguez, Faculty Speaker Tim Horner, Student Speaker Carl Nusa. I would now like to invite Marco Rodriguez, a graduate of the class of 1991 and a representative of the Alumni Association to the podium. Hello graduates. On behalf of the Sacramento State Alumni Association, I am extremely proud to offer my congratulations on your graduation. Today you are joining a proud and prestigious family of more than 224,000 Sacramento State alumni. Our graduates are succeeding in communities around Sacramento and around the world. They are problem solvers, entrepreneurs, creative thinkers, and innovative leaders. During my career and as a volunteer, I have seen the success of our alumni firsthand. I have watched them grow and excel in their professional and service endeavors, so I have no doubt that you have a bright futures ahead. As those futures unfold, I hope that you will continue to be active members of the Hornet family for life. The Alumni Association stands ready to help you stay connected, get involved, and network with your fellow alumns. Whether you'd like to visit campus, attend an event, access the alumni directory as you pursue your first job or change a job, or simply want to connect with alumni association via our social networks. The Alumni Association encourages you to maintain your Hornet roots and be proud of your connection to Sacramento State. So on behalf of the Alumni Association, I encourage you to live your dreams, explore, change the world, Congratulations, class of 2015. It is now my privilege to introduce to you the president of the Sacramento State University, Dr. Robert Nelson. We are a Hornet family. 30,488 students attend Sacramento State. 1,623 faculty teach those students. 
1,603 staff members serve the faculty and the students at Sacramento State. When you have a large family like this, you have a lot of great things that happen, wonderful things and amazing experiences. But when you have a family this large, large you also sometimes have losses. Before I begin, I would like to ask for a moment of silence while I read the names of the nine students, eight faculty members, and four staff whom we lost last year. Students, Omar Char, Cristobal Corona, Ashley Jenkins, Carla, Carla Melancon Hunt, Kenny Wynn, Cesar Padilla, Jesus Soto, Andre Uvales, Maritza Vargas, Faculty, Paul Aikman, Marielle Brandt, William Bynum, Leo Dabagavian, Bill Edwards, Abe Lowe, Lester Luther, Peter Shattuck, Staff, Richard Greenhaw, James Jones, Jeffrey Law, James Wardup. They will all be missed. They were all part of our family. Thank you for letting us remember them because they are so important to us. Now, it's about you. It's about you students. It's about what you've accomplished. Congratulations, students. This is a wonderful time. It's a joyous time. This is the best day I have every year. It is a time of celebration, a time where we are rightly proud of you. Today, we graduate 3,578 students. Get that, 3,578 Hornets. It's a tremendous day for the students, for you, but it's even more a tremendous day for those in the audience here, for your parents, for your grandparents, for your friends, for your spouses, for your partners, for your children. This is a day when they have watched you work so hard to finally reach your dreams, the dreams of an education. Today is also a great day for Sacramento, for Northern California, for all of California. We began the day by asking the alumni to stand. And it's always amazing to look out there and see how many people have graduated from Sac State. The Hornet family is Sacramento. One in every 20 students, one in every 20 people were a student here and graduated here from Sacramento State. In all, 224,383 students have graduated from this great university. That's an amazing number. Sacramento State is the capital's university. It is the heart and the core of Sacramento itself, of the region, and of this state itself. Our mission statement says it all. 
as California's capital university. We transform lives by preparing students for leadership, success, and service. I am extremely proud that we have this university here. It is so diverse. It is diverse both in economics and in ethnic status. We are the seventh most diverse university west of the Mississippi. And that diversity makes us stronger. What I'm going to say now you're going to think is a little strange. But I am actually proud that 51.3% of our students, of you, are categorized as low income. Now, you've got to be thinking, why would he be happy and proud that 51% are low income? It's because when you graduate, those words low income, they're never going to be spoken about you again. Never. <laughs> Instead, you're going to lift this region. You're going to lift your families. You're going to help others to succeed. Education is the great equalizer. Your college degree means that you will make a million dollars more than someone who just finished high school. But it isn't all about dollars. It's about what you will do with that education out there. It is about how you will fulfill your dreams. Sacramento State's faculty are transforming lives. But graduates today, you have to remember that you must, and I mean must, give back because you did not get here without the help of others. Let me give just one short example that I think you all know about. I am so proud of our student government of ASI. They put in place a food pantry this year. And in that food pantry, we are serving 90 students every day. They are giving back. Our student government is giving back. They understand what it means and they're making a difference. 69 of our students are guardian scholars. Guardian scholars are children, students, who have lived in foster homes. Living in a foster home is not an easy way to live. I want to tell you the story of one of those children. She's an adult, she's 23, who we've had over for dinner. Her name is Stephanie Isinga. She has been in four foster homes. That's a rough life. Three of those foster homes have brought her out and said to her, it's over. We don't want foster children anymore. You're going to go have to go live with somebody else. Do you know what that would be like? How much that would hurt? Well, a couple weeks ago, the family she's with now, just as she's getting ready to graduate, asked her to come out to talk to them. And she thought, oh, they're going to tell me, you got to leave. You don't have a job. You graduated. Go make it on your own now. We've done enough. But when she came out, what did she see? Their will with her name in the will. In two weeks, Stephanie Eitzinga 
and this happened and then it was broadcast on the Today Show last Thursday. A Sac State student, Stephanie Isinga, will become Stephanie Kramer. They are adopting her. That's what I mean about giving back. I want to tell you another story. Story of a girl who just graduated, a young woman who just graduated at the 8.30 ceremony this morning. Her name is Nayeli Barra. When she came to Sac State, she was undocumented. She had a younger sister that she was having to take care of, no parents, homeless. She took a drawing class, and it was cold, so cold. And what did the students do? They bought her a coat. And what did the professor do? He found her an apartment and paid for the apartment. And what did the students and the faculty do? They bought her clothes and furniture. And what did an alumni do? Dale Carlson, who owns Sleep Train, he bought her a bed and a mattress. And today, today she graduated. And that should touch you. But it is the power of the hornets, your power, that made that happen, that made it possible for us. No one graduates alone. You may have felt alone when you were doing that science project, when you were getting ready for that exam, when you were in the library, you may have felt very much alone, but there were others who were supporting you. Your parents, your partners, your spouses, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, los abuelos y las abuelitas, the elders, your friends, your sons, your daughters. Many of them had to make a great sacrifice for you. Maybe it was just writing the check. Thank you, everyone, for the checks. But it really isn't about money. It's about the sacrifices that they made so that you could study and be here and succeed. They have been here for you and we need to recognize them now. Mothers and fathers, will you please rise so that we may salute you? Grandmothers and grandfathers, will you please rise so that we may salute you? I have a secret. Some of you got some extra help. Some of you had a hubby or a wife who helped you so that you could get through school, or a partner. Will the husbands and wives and partners please rise so we can salute you? There is another more special group who have sacrificed so you could get here today. 
who are there for you all the time, who went to bed without that bedtime story, who went to bed without that kiss, and who got that kiss late at night after you'd closed the books. Would the sons and daughters and hold those babies up high, will you rise now? They sacrifice for you. There's another group that has sacrificed so we can be here today, so that we can be here safe and we can be here in a world of peace. Would the veterans that are, who are graduating today please rise so we can salute you. And would all of the veterans in the audience please rise. The veterans have made a difference. They have transformed our lives. They made us better. You will do the same. This university is transforming my life already. I know it's transforming your lives, and I want to prove it right now. Would everyone who is the first to graduate in their family please rise so we can show you the difference that Sac State is making. Way to go, Hornets. Yes, we are making a difference. And today is a day of gratitude. Not a day of a new beginnings, but a day to go out and celebrate the parents who help you, even though they had never gone to college. Today is a day to celebrate everyone who is here transforming this area. Did you know that Sacramento State students did two million hours in community service this last year? Two million hours transforming this region. Sacramento State, for five years, has been on the President's honor roll for community engagement. And with that in mind, I have four requests to make of you. One, please stay engaged with your community. Help others the way you help Nayeli. Help the homeless. Help those who are sad. Reach out and make a difference. Be involved. Two, don't be a stranger. Come back and visit us. Stay involved with Sac State. Remember that you will always be a Hornet and part of the Hornet family. Three, dream. Dream big. There are no boundaries. Don't let your job box you in. Don't let life stop you. You are hornets. You can do anything. You can do the impossible. Four, continue to learn. As scientists and mathematicians, we know you're going to continue to learn. But now, be students of the world. Ask questions. Challenge. Think. Be a proud hornet forever. I can't end this address, even though we've recognized them already, without recognizing and thanking the faculty. 
they prodded you, they pushed you. I know they made them, you mad at them. Many times you laugh about it, but you know it's true. And then they pushed you again, a little bit harder, and challenged you a little bit more so that you could get this education. Faculty, will you please rise so the students can applaud for you? And I will join them. Thank you, faculty, for everything that you have done to make this day possible. Thank you for your high standards, for the quality education that you've given these students. Today is a proud day, a day which we will always remember. Today, graduates, thanks to the faculty and the staff at Sacramento State, you really are made at Sac State. And with that, I have to do it. Sac State is number one. Stingers up. Sac State is number one. Stingers up. Thank you, President Nelson. It is my pleasure to introduce our student commencement speaker, Carl Nuza, from the Department of Biological Sciences. Carl grew up in Cameroon, West Africa, and came to us via the University of Arkansas. Far from home and family, Arkansas was not a fit for Carl. He continued his search for academic and community environment that suited his collegiate goals a search that brought Carl to Sacramento, where Sacramento State's College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics was the combination of academic challenge and community he was looking for. Since his arrival in the fall of 2012, Carl has excelled academically and been on the Dean's Honor List four times. He has embraced the collegial and supportive environment that is NSM and become a secure contributing member Please welcome your student speaker, Carl Nuza. Thank you. What an honor it is for me to address such fine ladies and gentlemen, considering that just a few years ago, I had no idea where I'd be right now. When I graduated from high school in Cameroon, West Africa, in the top tier of my, of my class, I decided to do something a little bit more challenging. And what's more challenging than coming to the United States and pursuing a degree? I wanted to be a doctor because that's what Africa needs a lot of right now. So I did what most people don't do. When you graduate, you leave your mom's house, but I left the whole continent behind. I decided I was going to the United States, and that's what I did. But coming from a third world country, I didn't get my fair warning. Because when I reached and started college in Arkansas, everything was different. The environment was different. The pace of life was different. Technology was way ahead of me. And the way people interacted with me was different. And this is college we're talking about. When you were not focused even for one second, your GPA will let you know. It starts to act like your bank account right around tuition time. It just keeps going down, you know. But my dad didn't raise a quitter, and even though I wanted to go back home so bad, I decided I was going to keep going. I had to change something, and that's how I found myself in Sac State. And when I got here, I thought I was just going to sit in the background and figure out my way around. But there's nothing to figure out at Sac State. Just look around you. There's different races of people from all walks of life, and we're getting along just fine. And if you ever get here at Sac State, you will fit right in. The degree I have today has my name on it, but it doesn't tell the whole story. I have friends who have pushed me, who woke me up at 12 midnight because we had an exam tomorrow. 
I have faculty who told me I could do it. And that means a lot to me. The story we have might be different, but we have all faced obstacles to be here. You know, they say hardships are like a bachelor's degree because we all have one. And, and even though we've all faced tough times, juggled family, school, work, finances, health, and all that, we made it. We juggled papers and exams. And the funny thing about exams is your instructors would tell you that they schedule the exams individually. But all five science classes happen to fall on the same Tuesday. I've always had a conspiracy theory about that. But it was a good thing because it got me to work and it got me to know my strengths and weaknesses. I can study for five science classes, it's no problem. But there's no way I can do it in one night. So the success we enjoy today is not because we did it in one night. It's the culmination of day in, day out, no excuse hard work for the past couple of years. We were successful, we are proud of it, and we want you to know it. No matter how many times we decided we were going to quit, we did not quit. We pulled together and we pulled through it. And that's something I'm going to write home about. Now where do we go from here? Even though we are full of caffeine and energy drinks from all those nights of studying, our instructors have given us a taste of knowledge. It's a beautiful but yet very scary thing because the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. So it does not end. Let me be the buzzkill when I tell you that there's a whole world of knowledge out there waiting for you. And when you start your next quest for that knowledge, be it medical school, graduate school, or even starting the next Apple, I hope you continue to learn, to continue to educate yourself, because at the end of the day, the only thing you can claim to be yours is knowledge. You have the knowledge to make yourself a better person, and you have the knowledge to make the world a better place. To all of you graduating today, there's a storm out there and it does not discriminate. You will face tough times. And if you forget everything you learned in college, remember this. You were better and you've overcome 100% of your worst days. And you can continue to do that. The only thing that can stop you is you. You have everything you need to make your decisions from now on. To our friends and family, it's been tough. It's been long. And I hope we have proven to you that when it comes to our education, we will do whatever it takes to get to infinity and beyond it. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Our faculty speaker this year is the winner of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics Award for Outstanding Scholarly and Creative Activities. This award recognizes a faculty member who has made sustained, outstanding contributions to scientific research. This year's award winner is Dr. Tim, Tim Horner in the Department of Geology. Dr. Horner received his PhD from The Ohio State University in 1992 and spent three seasons in Antarctica on his graduate work. He has been a faculty member at Sacramento State for 22 years and is currently the chair of the geology department. He specializes in salmon habitat and stream bed restoration and has brought in more than $1.5 million in projects on the local rivers. Dr. Horner is a strong supporter of student research and exposes his students to a variety of real-world problems. He has supervised more than 40 graduate and undergraduate thesis projects. This has produced a series of reports, abstracts, and publications that show how our local rivers have changed through time. He is currently working on products, projects with the Department of Water Resources Bureau of Reclamation and City of Sacramento. 
You may have seen him and his students working on the American River, where with these organizations, they are restoring breeding habitat for salmon. Aerial photos of their project sites so show large increases in the number of salmon nests after improvement of the habitat. His work is especially important as we deal with the effects of drought, climate change, and human alteration of our natural ecosystems. Please welcome Dr. Horner. Thank you, Dean Trainer. Good afternoon, graduates. You look marvelous. I have a story to tell you this afternoon, and it's a story about a song that I really like. I think there's a lesson here for scientists and mathematicians. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple things about me first. I like country music, and I think this came from my childhood when I helped my uncle and my granddad milk cows on their dairy farm. I'd meet my uncle in the barn at 5.30 in the morning, and he was always there first. I never beat him there. He'd always, he'd be there hard at work. And the cows would be munching softly on their morning hay. There'd be the sweet smell of silage and grain in the air. There were a couple of other smells that weren't quite as romantic, but we wore big rubber boots and we watched where we stepped, and we won't go there. Um, the milking machines hissed softly in the background as country music played on an old radio in the corner. And this was old country music. This was even before FM radio existed. This was Patsy Cline. This was the Everly Brothers. This was a guy named Hank Williams Sr. that had that lonesome yodel. Some of you know who I'm talking about. And then there's this new guy named Johnny Cash. And I really like Johnny Cash. And he had a song that I especially liked it was a song called One Piece at a Time. And I think there's a story there for scientists. And he watched the pieces go by, and he wanted a Cadillac so bad he could just feel it. But he knew as an automotive worker, he'd never be able to end mathematicians. So this story was about an automotive worker in Detroit. And he worked on the assembly line, and he put Cadillacs together all day long up with his plan. He was going to put one piece at a time in his lunchbox and take it home. And that's how this story goes. It tells a story about him taking one piece at a time home. Now, I think there are a couple of messages here for you as graduates. And number one, I think the first is an easy and obvious ethics lesson. I'm not proposing that you steal anything. Let's get away from that immediately. In fact, it didn't work out very well for him. When he went to put the car together, it had been assembled over many years, or the parts had been gathered over many years. It turned out he had two headlights on one side and one on the other. And then there's a big tail fin on one side, not on the other. So basically, it didn't work. So be honest and ethical as scientists. That's our first lesson. Next, I think there really is a message about science when we think about it's worked. I've had a lot of small projects, and I've built slowly, one piece at a time. You know the story. In science, we form a hypothesis. We gathered about that one piece at a time. And that's how my research is. Sometimes we go back to the lab and gather some more data. How many of you have counted fruit flies late at night because the time was about to expire? I see it. I knew the biologist. Or go on to feed in, uh, samples into the instrument, uh, chemists, geologists. Your career will go like that, too. You will gather things. You will build things one piece at a time. And finally, this is an important message. I think as scientists, we need to report our results. In the Johnny Cash song, there's a little bit of a joke. Um, the story goes, as they went to take the title in, they had had to assemble the car over many years. And the title stood three feet tall and wore, uh, weighed 40 pounds. So there's a little bit of a, a joke there in the song. But as scientists, you need to report your songs, your, uh, pardon me, your results too. And this is especially important in today's world. Right now, Polls have showed that more than half the people in the United States don't believe in evolution. Scientists, mathematicians, you've got a job to do. Right now, you can turn on talk radio and you can hear the doubters, the skeptics, who aren't sure that humans are changing the environment. Scientists and mathematicians, you have a job to do here, too. Talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, talk to your family, tell them what you know. 
In a minute, I'm going to leave the stage, and I'm going to join our graduates. And in a few more minutes, the president will grant your degrees. We have given you the skills to succeed as scientists and mass mathematicians. Now, you will need to apply those skills for the rest of your life, just like the Johnny Cash song said, one piece at a time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Horner. Each year, the university bestows scholastic honors upon those undergraduate candidates whose academic excellence has consistently been recognized by the faculty. We have designated in our program those candidates who have received special recognition for high scholastic achievement. May I now present them to you. Will the undergraduates graduating cum laude with a grade point average between 3.50 and 3.74, please stand. Thank you. Please be seated. Will the graduates, undergraduates graduating magna cum laude with a grade point average between 3.75 and 3.89, please stand. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. The third group of undergraduates is graduating summa cum laude. This means highest praise in Latin. It is reserved for students with the very highest grades, those who have a grade point average between 3.90 and 4.0. Will the undergraduates graduating summa cum laude please stand? Congratulations, all of you. Each year, several national scholastic honor societies invite for membership those students on the campus who have displayed exceptional academic ability throughout their studies. These societies include the Society of Phi Kappa Phi, Golden Key Honor Society, Pi Mu Epsilon in Mathematics, Sigma Pi Sigma in Physics, and Gamma Theta Upsilon in Geography. Will the candidates selected for membership in an honor society please stand? Thank you. I commend you all. Please be seated. Will the faculty marshals please direct the master's candidates to the stage to be hooded and recognized? It is time to present the candidates, and we will begin with those who have earned master's degrees. It is my pleasure to invite Dr. Frederica Freka Harmson, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, to join me at the podium. As Provost, Dr. Harmson is charged with developing, implementing, and monitoring the quality of all academic programs at the, our university. President Nelson, Will you please join me to greet the candidates? As master's candidates entered the arena this afternoon, you may have noticed that they carried a cloth over their arm. That cloth is the master's hood and a part of the academic regalia. The academic costume is important to us for it signifies membership in the academy, the community of scholars. Master's degree holders wear a mortarboard, a black gown with oblong sleeves open at the wrist, and the hood. It is the hood that tells the story. The hood symbolizes much hard work. It confers special status. While no area of study is ever truly conquered, Master's candidates, you have reached a level of mastery that makes you a member of the academic community. We welcome you and hope that your hood brings you great pride. Congratulations. The 
The master's graduates will be individually recognized today as they approach the podium. Their name will be read and they will be hooded by their major advisor, receive their certificate, have their photograph taken, and then return to their seat. We ask that the audience and other graduates remain seated during the presentations so each graduate can be seen by their family and friends. From the Department of Geology, being hooded by Timothy Horner, Douglas Dean. From the Department of Biological Sciences, being hooded by Kelly McDonald, Adriel Cruz. From the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, being hooded by Scott Ferran, Jeremy Hardin. Also from the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, being hooded uh, from the department, Zachary Tintianco. From the Department of Chemistry, being hooded by Dr. Roy Dixon, Stephanie Samra. That completes our master's degree candidates. Congratulations to all of them. We now move forward with the presentation of bachelor's degree candidates. Faculty marshals, please escort the faculty to their position. Once the faculty are in place, please escort the bachelor's degree candidates to the stage for presentation of certificates. Now presenting the candidates from the Department of Chemistry, Olivia Lardy. Bradley Perrick. David Ricci. Guyane Harutianyan. Maria Santos. Nancy Cepeda. Theodore Okadobi. Samantha Schmidt. Now presenting the candidates from the Department of Geography, Boulien Namasoli. Sao Landeros. Michael Bryan. Anthony Dowry.
Now de presenting the candidates from the Department of Geology, Sean D. Nielsen. Noe Lopez. Nora Maroka. Carl Newman. Marianne Leonard. Eric Johnson. Shanna Rose. Now presenting the candidates from the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, David Klapek. Connor O'Hare. Keana Romero. Carly Hartman. Carl Eberly. Brian James Tolentino. Now presenting the candidates from the Department of Physics and Astronomy, Joshua William Reinheimer. Taylor Simpson. Andrew Nguyen. Now presenting the candidates from the Department of Biological Scientists, Lords Camberos. Alex Cantanio. Danielle Leola. Alicia Weber. Alexander Conter Fermo. Hua Trong. Carl Nuza. Michaela Nukal. Vikramjit Singh. Vera Akanova. Marcus Guerrero. Crystal Zamora. Jenny Yang. Lois Ugochi Onuama. Aliyah Wilson. <laughs> Stacy Middlebrook. Brenda Georgina Anguiano. Sarah Michelle Rudes. Kylie, 
Kylie Engelhart. Alvarez, okay. Brandon Alvarez. Rita Zhang. Katharina Tang. Marnell Quintos. Ivan Tang. Sharon Jeet Singh. Sidra Khan. Michael Delgadillo. Thomas de Guzman. Kian Yi Mentiang Yang. Sarah Johnson. Luella Gallardo Martinson. Zhao Bang. Micah Wynn. Rianne Norens. Ryan Barajas. Lucas Jimbo Urichi. Asma Dadgar. Taisia Nova. Ashley Texan. Sierra Harris. Trisha Velasquez. Natalie Marine Flores. Marco Antonio Lopez. Caitlin Gillum. Stephen Yun. Derica Marie Flores. Tyler Pulley. Sammy Villa. Aubrey Carol Connor. Kristen DeBacker. Monique Rodarte. Tony Yang. Vivian Deep. Monique Sutcliffe. Aaron House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Leanna Nguyen. Cindy Viveros. Bua Lee. Cody Smith. Joseph Mulder. Nikolai Miranoff. Michael Odysseus Gallardo. Cutter Chaboya. President Nelson, will you please join me at the, president, at the podium? Mr. President, as Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, it is my privilege to present these students who are assembled before you as candidates for the degrees under the requirements prescribed by the trustees of the California State University. These candidates are recognized by the faculty for their academic accomplishments and are recommended to receive their appropriate degrees. Will the candidates for master's degrees please rise and remain standing until the degrees are conferred? Candidates for the bachelor's degrees please rise and remain standing until the degrees are conferred. Thank you, Dean Trainer. Graduates and faculty, this is the best part of my job. Candidates for the master's degrees and bachelor's degrees, you have heard the recommendation of the Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics of Sacramento State. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon each of you who have satisfied the requirements the appropriate master's and bachelor's degrees with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto unto pertaining. Your alumni, congratulations. You made it. Please be seated. There are a lot of people out there that love you. Graduation ceremonies are filled with traditions. We wear ancient robes that were meant to keep scholars warm in 16th century rock buildings. We march behind a mace as if we are going to war. We wear funny hats that you graduates have made even more funny with all of the styrofoam and the extra glitter and everything else. Actually, these traditions mean something. And education is sacred. You may lose that million dollars that I mentioned earlier. You may lose lots of things but you'll never lose your education. No one can take it from you, as I said. And you will never cease to be a hornet. There are two final traditions that we need to undertake now. The first one is, and don't do it yet, okay? I get my teaching moment. 
The first one is moving the tassel from the right to the left. Why do you think we do that? What is on the left? Our hearts. And when you move that tassel from the right to the left, you are taking your alma mater. You are taking Sacramento State and putting it forever in your heart. And with that, graduates, please move your tassels from the right to the left. I wish to thank all the members of the platform party for being here today and the faculty as well. I also wish to thank all the staff who have sacrificed this day so that they could be here for you. The wind, brass ensemble, thank you for being here. Taylor, thank you for singing for us. The final tradition, the very final tradition. The platform party is going to get up and walk out. After them, students, you get the privilege to take one last loving walk with the faculty. Hug them, say goodbye to them, and then go get with your families because you have been made at Sac State and we are very proud of you and your families are proud of you. Celebrate and be safe. But remember always, stingers up!